What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review, and today we got something really, really special. This is an international in-house scrim between players who are going to be playing in the World Championship, because Worlds is literally this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I know sometimes people complain and they're like, I didn't know the tournament was this weekend, but I like Riot Games is a terrible job of advertising it. Uh, and maybe that's true, but look, I am coming to right up to you and saying worlds is this weekend so if you want to watch it uh watch it obviously if you're from uh americas uh it's going to be a bit harder to uh watch because usually it's really really early in the morning i think it's like 4 a.m pacific time or maybe 5 a.m pacific time it starts this time around so obviously uh you know if you're from eu or from asia then it's a bit easier to watch but you know either way you can always watch the replays of it uh, i'm going to be doing vod reviews of course for worlds uh so you guys can see the games that are going on and i'm doing vod reviews right now of these world in-houses because look at this stacked lobby man dish soap 62nd dish soap one of the best players in the americas uh 62nd one of the best players in china jetosaur one of the best players in eu and then you know some other ningli a very very high rated chinese player as well black sheep strong americas player the only players that i'm not familiar with are uh, maris and panda um but i mean if if the rest of the lobby's quality is any indication they are fantastic players as well i'm sure and i mean they are I would assume at Worlds. So uh so very, very strong players as well. Look at this start for YBY1, by the way. The slam of the Shojin before he even sees his augment here, saying that he wants to play Cinder Reroll that bad. Uh and uh and maybe okay, looking at, at potentially risky moves. Oh, I didn't translate this, uh, but I did I did Yandex uh translate all of these and I got dark and top for this. Uh, I'm not really sure what that could be. I guess it's it's one of those ones where it's like your third augment. Uh it's like but I don't know what dark would be in this context, so I, I guess we'll find out. But it's probably like prismatic finish or gold finisher or something like that. Um, also, I guess I didn't really talk about, but we are watching YBY1 today. YBY1 is a player who I VOD reviewed in the past. Uh, he's a player who I have a very, very, very high opinion of. Um, I've talked about this before. He is one of the best players, I would say the best player in Vietnam, and I think some could even call him one of the best players in the world. I would say... He, he, I, I have to, I have to think a little further on it, but I think, I think right now he, he might be my front runner for who is going to win worlds. I feel like this guy has so consistently just always, always, always playing really, really, really good TFT, doing things that other people aren't doing. It reminds me of, you know, before in, in set seven, uh, when Shunga won worlds, uh, you know, watching, uh, Shunga play, VOD reviewing Shunga before he, he even won worlds. And I, I kept being blown away by his play being like, oh my God, this guy is just an absolute monster. And, and watching YBY1 really reminds me of, uh, of watching Shunga during that time period, just so often doing stuff that I'm like, oh my God, like this is a crazy play. But I mean, if you really think about it, it makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, we're going to start off here. We had this Eldritch board, uh, along with the Cinder, but now the we have the uh, at least two we really want to play towards Shapeshifter, so we're going to get the Shivani in here. Makes perfect sense. Of course, it's YBY1, so of course it's going to make sense. Um, but yeah, it's always just a treat to watch him. I mean, even the, the Shoujin slam that early onto the Cinder to get some mana to try to get another cast, it really looks like, in YBY1's opinion, that this comp is really, really, really solid. The fact that he insta-slammed that Shoujin, he's a very, very high opinion. And I, I mean, look, he took uh, he took risky moves here. This is going to guarantee... guarantee guarantee carousel priority if he wants to oh that's the only sad part is if he wanted to go for a nashers you would think you'd be able to grab it but it actually gets sniped the bow gets sniped so now he has to take this rod here could make a morello slam if he wanted to just it's you know attack speed it's an okay item onto syndra uh or he could wait on the slam but yeah it looks like he is going to just make that morello slam with the idea that he wants to get an item down. And it's really looking like we're gonna play Elder Tree Roll from this spot, but obviously, you know, we will see as the game goes on. Uh, another player in this lobby looking towards Eldritch as well, holding on to uh, the, the Cinder pair. The only downside is they don't actually have mana item on Cinder. And if you guys remember to early on in the set when this actually was like a, a really, really, really strong comp, you kind of only wanted to play Cinder reroll when you had Cinder's early and mana items for Cinder, because obviously this is a stacking champion. She is going to get more stacks as the game goes on. And so if you don't have have that early Syndra, it's a lot harder to, you know, get her stacked. And especially now after the nerfs to Syndra, you know, early on, maybe Syndra was so broken that you could hit her 3-2, uh, you know, find like a Syndra 2, have her stack up across the rest of the game and then become really strong. Uh, but no longer, you really need to get that early stacking to make her really solid. But it is... It is really interesting that YUI1 rates this comp that highly. I think this is something that I've heard a lot of people talk about, that Cinder reroll might just be, uh, you know, a sleeper OP hit. I feel like it wasn't played that, that much uh, in the cup, the North American, or just America's cup that we watched last uh, 
last weekend, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see if it emerges in Worlds. These kind of meta shifts uh, definitely happen sometimes. Also, great positioning by YBO1 just to ensure that Cinder can get as many casts off as possible uh, during rounds like this. You really just want to not have a ton of damage being dealt to the Krugs and, and make sure that, you know, Cinder gets as as quickly as possible. She can farm up that mana and get as many casts off as possible. And that was a lot of casts, actually. Uh, she bought a pair here as well. Not bad. Um, but okay. Continuing to scatter around the lobby, we see this player really doesn't have that much of a route towards playing Cinder, I would say. It's it's theoretically possible, but not amazing. Uh, gonna go for the Reforge here and just make the Adaptive Helm, yeah. And that's another AP item for, or another mana item for Cinder, which is always uh, what you're excited for. And yeah, he's gonna continue to scout here, looking at 60 second spot here, saying like, what will I, I mean, 60 second spot does kind of look like he's angling this comp as well. He's got the JG slammed onto the Cinder. He's got pretty decent Mordekaiser items, the BT very, very nice onto Mordekaiser. So it almost looks like 60 second wants to take this line as well. It's just, I feel like his spot is so much worse. Why do I one looks a little uh, frustrated there? Because he's like, well, why is the 60 second guy just trolling and, and playing this comp? My spot is so much better. Uh, we'll see though if why do I one wants to commit to that or if he wants to pivot into to something completely different. We will uh, see here, especially going into second augment here. Eldritch plus one would be fantastic because we do uh, have four Eldritch right now. So we could get that five. We have the Onyx Spark Augment, not bad. I don't think you really want the Shimmer Scale or the Support uh, Item Crest here, but we will see. Um, it was actually in a reroll the this first. I'm, I'm curious actually what he's looking at. Uh, Golden Quest here. Um, we're 70 HP is the scary part. We're 40 gold, but obviously we're getting a big influx of gold. I, I don't think I would angle towards this uh, just because we're so low. We're 70 HP. It looks really, really scary to try it. And our board's not that strong, right? Our board's okay, um, especially, you know, like Syndra. We're, we're gonna be sitting we're gonna be sitting on the cinder for a really really long time um she's gonna scale up but if we take golden quest you really want to be strong right now so i imagine it's just support item here and you take a generically strong one from this spot but he's gonna reroll it and oh my god it actually is golden quest he says you know what i have the extra gold from risky moves why not why not go golden quest here i mean 56 gold is not not low it's it's not low uh for this spot it's not insanely high and you definitely want a decent amount in this spot 70 hp let's see if he will make it because these are scrims man it's not like uh i one is just trolling this game he must think that this is actually his, his best odds to play the game and obviously with the the econ augment that he started the game with uh this is his call and golden quest you know it's it's all in, right? Either you get there to the end and you're you're gonna have an insanely strong board or he's just gonna die before he gets there, which would be uh, very bad. But here, there's a bunch of gold into his pocket, up to 88. He still has uh, 80, 85 gold to go, uh, which is the scary part, obviously. Um, you need so many rounds to get there. Also, this fine vintage setup, uh, fine vintage multi-strikers, just such a scary comp in general. Fighting 62nd here, who ended up actually moving items over to Swain. Also, this is funny, he has two Swains on board for the two tanky, and then he just bought a third Swain, so those aren't going to combine at the start of the round. But, I mean, with two tanky, it looks certainly like um, 62nd is, you know, going to, to hard angle towards that center reroll comp to play the... Uh, the shapeshifters with two tanky going to just pick up a, a four cost here with glove uh with the idea probably being that i mean one we want to take as much gold as possible in this spot um and two the glove kind of opens up opportunities for us to build ad items if we end up getting like an ad unit like a, a schmolder or something so we'll see uh have to imagine we are going to buy this mordekaiser too just because it's going to save us a lot of hp down the line and i mean we'll sell it uh, when we need to, and it'll only cost us one gold. So I think this makes sense. Um, he still hasn't bought it yet. Oh my God. He's actually not gonna, he's gonna, he's not gonna buy the Mordekaiser here. His his thought process is like, I don't wanna pay the one gold for Mordekaiser here, even though maybe it'll save me. I mean, it's a zero item Mordekaiser at the end of the day. So his thought process must be, it's not gonna save me enough gold that, uh, that it's worth costing me the one gold because, you know, obviously, Buying the Mordekaiser, when I sell it back, you're, you're going to get one less gold because it's a it's a two-star unit. And I mean, maybe his thought is, I mean, I'm 124 gold here. We're obviously very, very accelerated econ-wise from the uh, uh, the risky moves. So why even try to be strong now? We're just going to try to hit this golden quest as soon as possible. That's a crazy because it, it's one gold. I would think you would get so much more HP out of actually playing around... Uh, just this Mordekaiser, but he says, you know what, fuck it, like, uh, who, who cares? We're, we're gonna send it down to 32. But, 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 the upside is we have a lot of gold right now. Obviously, we're gonna go into minions. It'll be crucial to see how much we uh, we actually get dropped from minions here, because still a lot of econ left to get there. Another basically 40 gold. We gotta get to 175, that's the magic number. And our board is cheap as, as hell. Our board is 11 gold, um, so 
We uh, we really need uh, the magic number for us is 166. We are getting quite close there. It's not going to be this round, but next round that we'll have it. What what is this charm? Is it, I, he keeps swinging it around so I can't see it? Oh, okay. This is just the one that makes uh, your your board 200 percent. Oh no, this is the 200 percent uh, uh, movement speed one, right? But 156. So we should uh, we'll be 166, and then we can full sell the board. So we can get there next round. 32 HP. I mean, this is a great round to cash out on, actually, because we get that extra time from uh, from going into the uh, the minion round. This is actually pretty fortunate for Y, but I mean, honestly, if he there's there's no way, right? But he's one. He's gonna be. Is he gonna be exactxies on uh, on having the amount of gold that he needs to cash? Um, all right, Chris here. You. The big thing for YBY is he wants to take something really quick here because he's got 48 seconds to make this pivot. This is the hardest pivot in the game to make. Is is the Golden Quest pivot where you have to sell your entire board and then recreate an entire board. Great players mess this up all the time. So you want to take something really quick here. What do I see that I would immediately want to take? I don't really know. Jeweled Lotus is fine uh, and can be generically strong. I'd really love some kind of generically strong combat augment here. Lucky Gloves with one glove open seems... I mean, you probably just take Giant and Mighty because it's generically strong. That's exactly what you want. Generically strong augment here. He's going to pick that up. He's going to sell the board. Okay, he's not actually at exact he's, he's He's got actually a little bit of room to, to breathe here. There's the Briar too. And let's look at the roll down here. Picks up a Nora actually. A Nasus as well. Going to fit the Karma in on this board. Gwen too. Whoa, this is a really interesting board that we're actually putting together here. The Nora seems solid. He's not gonna. He's not looking towards um, playing like any kind of. Um, ooh, this is nice. This is nice. Gonna reforge here. Gets another uh, Sterex, though he really would like a healing item at this point. Um, but wow, this is a wild board to put together. A Karma board. Uh, mainly the idea being, I think that he really needs someone to hold on to these uh, these AP items, especially this Morello's. Um, so you know, if he just plays towards a kind of like standard vertical shapeshifter board, he's not gonna have that. Uh, I wonder if he is gonna get in four shape. No, he's actually gonna. Pivot out of uh, the other vertical shape that he has in and pivot into a preserver board. Wow, this is such a cool board. So it's it's like karma. It's it's like warrior's karma, right? Except we are playing obviously a briar too. This unit fits decently onto this board because you can fit her in with a Nico, um, and you know that fits in for witchcraft. So it all fits together. And hey, we're gonna win this fight. It's looking pretty good. I imagine we'd really like to pick up a BT off Carousel uh, for this briar here. Just getting healing onto her would be fantastic. If there's a really really broken unit, we could pick up that as well. But yeah, it is gonna be the BT here to complete the briar item just getting healing onto briar is obviously huge also you do have to wonder if at any point he's gonna think about feeding briar he will put himself in zero life uh, uh like one life um range whereas right now he could theoretically be two lives if he loses a, a close fight um but gonna continue to roll down here actually and yeah he goes for the feed i mean why not? Honestly, our board's pretty strong now with the Karma two uh, and the uh, the Gwen two, who's a nice backup carry for the Briar. Also, this is something that I think I I didn't do a lot when I w was like kind of you know I just started playing like the Shapeshifters comp and, and things like that. Um, but actually putting the Briar on the edge. You normally think when you have like a melee carry like Briar that you don't want her taking aggro because you're afraid she's gonna die, but. I mean, a couple of things are the case about this Briar unit. One, she is just disgustingly tanky on her own just because of how she is as a unit. Uh, and wow, we really we really continue to roll here. Um, and the other thing about Briar is that when she casts, she flies across the other side of the board sometimes. Um, and oftentimes she can drop aggro. So, you know, imagine, you know, our Briar gets aggroed on by this Ezreal here, um, but then she she ends up casting and flies over to the left. Sometimes that, that means that Ezreal's gonna, you know, she's gonna be outside of Ezreal's reign and then he's gonna drop aggro. So very, very often, and actually, it's beneficial to do what YBY was doing, which is having Briar on the edge here. And yeah, just like this position that we were talking about, he actually swapped with Rakan for one round, but okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, YBY's spot, he knows that there's so much strength in his board from the Briar 2 that he really just needs to stabilize around hitting everything else. He needs the Fiora 2 and the Rakan 2 just to have a decent uh, board put together here. And these are pr pretty uh, lowly contested units, so I think this makes sense. Warmog's TG going to be the call from YBY on. I was thinking about this. I mean, Warmog's certainly not the best Gwen item, but not the worst. She is a melee carry so she is jumping in there and, and taking aggro so the warmog is going to buy more time and the big thing is just getting item onto this fiora i love this getting a tg onto the fiora just so that she has items to play around because obviously a fiora two with zero items is not going to do much fiora two with the tg might do a lot now this is a scary fight versus this Cassidy board the nice thing though is that karma just stacks 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 and does so much damage here so yeah that looks pretty good um and hey we're on a win streak here three hp i mean this is a this is a crazy 
call from YUI1, but I mean, he's, he's going for it. And now that we've hit this, uh, we're going to start looking at pushing level nine. Level nine, we can get a lot more stuff to, to cap out our board in. We could get a random uh, Melio in for uh, for Scalarin, also just to start uh, like farming items for this last Gwen. Though, I mean, the rest of our units, especially with that TG are itemized, this is going to be a scary fight versus uh, this Wukong. But you just hope that your frontline, your Briar and your Gwen buy enough time and your Fiora so that your Karma can burn through these carries. And look at this. It wasn't even close, man. A stomp for my UI1 against a really, really strong board there, actually. And now... Two people down now, so guaranteed top six. Got to roll for a solid charm every single round. Uh, we are too far in the game to uh, to greet anything. We do have double reforger. Do you ever reforge the warmogs at this point with double reforger and just say, you know what? In two reforgers, I can probably find something better. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. I, in in YBY one's estimation, no, you don't do that. But okay. Swap sides here. Being away from the Kogma is usually pretty good, but he does have a fishbone, so I guess it doesn't really matter that much. But still, this Briar just chewing through entire boards. This is really really nice for YBY one. Uh, that was 60 seconds getting really really low i think dying there so it's going to be a top five at this point and yep just continuing to uh to climb the ranks uh the other unit that was that obviously you could throw into this board is a morgana by the way uh he's looking at archangels for the gwen i think it's the only uh, item for the gwen that makes any sense so i like this a lot and yep just gonna need to continue Rolling for solid charm, playing our strongest board, positioning well. Hey, there's a zillion two, not bad. Um, I don't even see what that was. Oh, I guess it could also have been Archangel's Karma, but this Karma unit, I think, is really just a Morello bot here. I don't think she does that much damage, especially compared to someone like Gwen, so we're just going to do this. Also note that he's giving Gwen the Adaptive Helm uh, mana generation, uh, as opposed to putting her in the front line and giving her the armor in Amar. I think this makes a lot of sense with uh, with a unit like Gwen, especially with the front line that we already have within the, uh, the Fiora and the Briar. We really don't need more front line. We just need a unit that's going to do damage speaking of which just getting through this cast it didn't take so long but we get there and it's another dub for yby1 top four locked in three hp now it was i wasn't gonna i'm not gonna say easy Ooh, orn artifact here wow wait wait wait. pause 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 uh orn artifact here what do you take in this scenario because there's a lot of interesting stuff i mean i would love to get this warmogs off of um Gwen, which is one thing that I would point out here. Um, my the thought would be you move this to just like Rakan and then you go like Infinity Force Gwen, I guess. Uh, I don't really think it can be Eternal Winter. I, I, I guess like the, the most solid just kind of like random item would could be Hull Crusher onto Rakan. I'm thinking actually Infinity Force and remove the Warmogs and move it here. Um, but uh, we'll see. Maybe he's maybe it could be Eternal Winter if he if he rates that item highly enough. But Rapid Fire Cannon, really? I mean. Uh, unless Rapid Fire Cannon on uh, on Gwen is certainly uh, broken, then I don't know. But okay, it is going to be... Okay, so this is going to be the setup. We are going to move the Archangels over to Karma. Yeah, I didn't really think about that, but that's another uh, thing that you could do. And then you could just put the Hull Crusher onto Gwen. Uh, he really, really cares about itemizing these guys and doesn't really care about getting items on the Strakhan at all, it seems like. And hey, another win, dish up down to 8 HP. Once again, we're 3 HP stuck on level 8, so we just have to pray that we don't fight someone insanely strong here because... Uh, uh, because I mean, any fight mean any fight loss means death. But I mean, the board is looking very strong at this point. The Briar Two has done a lot of work. We fed her a good bit, um, but we're so far from level nine is the only scary part here. Uh, Fifty HP for your your. Uh, ooh, I didn't even see that. That one had such a long description that I couldn't see what it was. Uh, once again, we have this kind of world where yeah, you can move the Hodge now to Gwen, do this, and then move the Warmogs over to Rakan. I think this is beautiful. I think this makes perfect sense. Fighting Dish Soap here up against a world champion. Want to make sure that ooh, we are up against such a strong board here. Just want to. Make Make sure that our Ari, uh, that Ari isn't like one tapping a lot of these units, and that Zoe's not fo hard focusing down this Briar. But she does do so much damage to the Briar. The Gwen's alive here. The Karma's doing work. The Zanya's okay, but then Karma cast. Oh my God! There's no way. There's actually no way. I don't. He didn't click on the HP, but Zan I mean, the setup from Dish Soap is so disgusting. And look at the HP on the Ari there to live. If if one more tick of damage. And, uh, and he would have killed Dish Soap and, and it would have been a top three. My God. Uh, that, that was a close fight. I wonder if there's anything. I mean, maybe you can you can say that, you know, Dish Soap getting the Zoe positioning actually was crucial. Getting the Zoe that ends up aggroing onto the Fiora, killing the Fiora pretty quickly. And the big thing is now that Spryer's in the center after Fiora's dead, the Zoe ends up aggroing onto the Briar here. MR shredding the Briar, which is really, really important. If we had Briar maybe on the edge here or, or you know, somehow she didn't take aggro from the Zoe, maybe it would have been winnable. Oh my God, what a crazy fight, HP. I, that was so close, why, why?
obviously uh, upset about it, but still a really, really fun game to watch. A really, really cool top four from YBY1. And it just shows just shows why he's such a solid player. I love this board that he built out around um, the uh, the Briar, you know, not uh, thinking that he has to play some kind of shapeshifter board or anything like that, um, saying, I'm just gonna play two shape. I'm gonna play around the Karma uh, because I need someone to hold on to the Shojin Morello and play around that. And it, it worked out really, really well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm excited to watch Worlds. I will be co-streaming it with Kai some of the days, probably. I don't know if we're doing it on Friday, but I mean, you know, just uh, I'll put something in my Discord, so go join that if you uh, are not in that already, um, or I'll, I'll talk about it as we get closer to the date very, very soon. And obviously, After Worlds is set 13, baby. Lots to look forward to. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you know, I really appreciate everybody always watching the videos. Uh, it was it was cool seeing uh, in my uh, in my long gap video how many people made it to the end of the video and posted baloney in the comments. Um, you know, I I I, I really like. TFT, the community that we've built, um, and just the, the fact that this is a place where we can just, you know, have fun, ha play play a game that we all enjoy and, you know, spend some time, sometimes away from the real world, uh, have, having fun and, and, and playing TFT and, and making community and, uh, and, and making the world seem like a nice place. So I will see you guys later. Thank you guys always for watching. Um, yeah, bye.